Okay, well I took the bolt out from this and this goes up to support this side of the solar panel. It's connected at both ends, but that's one solid rod across. It dropped it uh, from the bottom of this hole up to here a little bit as I was slowly loosening it. This is a good deal to check and see what you got coming. And because this is going to be a ground, I've basically been scraping some of this old paint off here. I want them to have a good connection. Something I'll show you here is pretty good. This ring terminal will come down right here. When I'm done tightening this bolt, I'm going to go ahead and seal it with some silicon to keep it from rusting and all that. But I've got to put the silicon after because I don't want it in between everything. The bolt goes through and the washer comes all the way up to this. That's why they, these look a little funny. Why didn't they bring the ring down here? Well, you got to have room not only for the bolt head and your wrench, but for the washer. It's good to put a washer here. It keeps you from, from this keeps this from going around and around like that. Get this back over here. Lift it up a bit. Stick it on there. Put the washer on. Get the nut on. Instead of trying to turn the nut inside that the shape of the C channel here, I'm gonna go ahead and thread the nut this way. If you hold it flat, that means it ain't gonna cross thread. Hopefully, I can just tighten this up. When I get it snug, I'm going to tap on the bottom of it until this goes up. Might have to take the needle nose vice grips up on the other nut inside. Yeah, it looks like it. I feel it turning. Now it's starting to get a little tight. Lift up. That's right about where it was. Hand out of the way. Nope. Only got so many fingers in there. That's what you got for life. They don't give you any more. Unless you like them plastic or steel ones operate on a cable or something. Without the washer, you could be doing a lot of damage to that lug. That would not be good. Alright, this is tightened up. Bend this out a little bit. I guess it's not going to matter being a ground right there. I'm going to go ahead and seal all this up with silicone and that will keep this uh, inside from rusting and causing corrosion and a bad ground. It will keep this joint good. And there we go. That's pretty much got it all sealed up. Ought to do it. Okay, got a little construction going on next door. They're building a warehouse for some drywallers. Anyway, now that I've got this up, this is 100% silicon. He doesn't want holes, so I kind of brushed this area off real hard and rubbed it with a rag real good. We're going to silicone this box down. Plenty of silicone. Got another tube inside. 100% silicon is paintable. Oops, sorry about that. Squeeze a nice copious amount on here. Stick the box down. I want to line it up a little bit, slide it around a little bit, get it in that perfect position. That ought to do. And then right here, I'm going to tie wrap this through the vent holes, and that should line it up and keep her decent. And there's the tie wrap. I went through this hole. I didn't want to tie wrap it to where it pulled up, so I kind of went up to the next hole. That way it pulls the box down, helps it stay down. At this end here, we're going to have a lead bar across there and a lead bar across there. And that'll keep it nice and heavy. It's also the reason for jacking this up and making this high enough where I can slide that lead bar in there. It might be a little tricky to get it in there, but I'm going to get it in there. And I don't think the wind is going to blow this thing around. <laughs> Not with all the silicone and the lead bars. I need to put the lead bars in here now before the uh, silicon starts to dry. That way it'll stay nice and flat. Okay, I must not have been paying attention. And like I say, if I make a mistake, I want to tell you. That way you know not to do the same thing I did. This one here, I crimped too far up. This wire came out on the yank test. So I just redid this one. That's why it's not painted red. But anyway, I was fixing to come to this part. That's my heat shrink. If you notice the way this lines up, I've got one inch here, one inch out here, one inch out here. And I got a heat gun. Move the heat gun. Always keep the heat gun moving. You'll see it start to shrink, and that's when it's time to go to the other side. Just always keep the heat gun moving. There we go. You see it starting to shrink. Now it's time to come over here and get this side of it. When you're done, you should see the shape of everything inside. That one's done. Let's get the next one. Now some heat shrinks have hot glue inside it. There we go. That's about dead center there. That'll keep the weather out. Some of them have a hot glue that helps seal it. Oop, keep it moving. It's already starting to shrink. Ooh, got my fingers warm there. There we are. And the other side. 
I'm a little close there. It's a habit, bad habit. Not the best. There we go. Make sure the end closes up all the way. I've got a bend in the wire. Go. That's a proper heat shrink right there. See if I turn this, you can see where it's been crimped. See the full shape of everything. This is real close to this insulation here that makes it strong. A second layer would make this thing stiff and very hard to bend. This is the one go this is the one that's going all the way down to the other end of the last uh, panel down here. So it goes out the box here and comes out over here, comes out here, and because it's the next cable, I've got it run on the outside here. And I just connect between two of the cables here and then come all the way up, comes up to one of those holes, and it's in order out here. That's this one. And we're taking this one all the way down. So I'm gonna run it up inside this. Okay, so here's the wire. Stick it up in there. And now that your wire is inside, one side of the clip goes up, and the other side of the clip goes up. You reach in, you press both of these down into that little trough. They lock pretty good. That thing is solid. Well, there we are, the last clip. Screw right there for the ground. And the connectors are in here. Heat shrinked. Tie wrapped up here and here. This is the last panel. Comes up, tie wrapped here, tie wrapped here, goes down for a drip loop up inside here. Got a clip, made another kind of clip up here, and another clip there, and it heads on up over there. Up over, heads all the way on up, comes out of the trough right there, goes down, has a drip loop, and then goes into the box. I know it's sideways goes in the drip loop and goes inside the box and from there it's got everything tie wrapped down there tie wrap there inside one of the holes and tie wrap there uh, to the other wire actually that's panel two that it's tie wrapped to keeps the wires in order and goes into the trough and comes on down anyway that's how I got it all hooked up now I just got to do uh, the, uh, the front two up there the yellow you see the yellow ones that's the front two on this one right here is the front two over here on this side and those two are the front two on the other side actually number 11 and 12 okay anyway I gotta do 13 which is right there 14 and 15 which is the last one on that so three more to go and I got I get to go back to that nice pretty yellow wire yeah, I finally figured out how to make the ultimate wire clip for this. Uh, it's in the shape like an M, like this. I'll show you a little more on it. But this part of it in the middle actually clamps the wire. And this will not move back and forth. Neither will the clip. I'll show you how I designed it real quick. Alright, so here's how the clip works. The wire is in here, and here's the shape of your channel. You can see how it curls around makes a J at both sides. Well, I've got it set so it looks like this. And this. If you look at it like this, you can see why it snaps in. Basically, I put the wire above it, slide this in like this, and reach up with my finger, and I pull this down, and it snaps into place. And if the wire is between here, it grips the wire and also makes it stick to the sides more. See that? Even just that much in there. It's a lot of pressure. It's not going to move. And if you put weight here, it's going to do nothing but spread these and make it even tighter. So, I think it's pretty decent. And the length of it, it isn't going to turn. And the weight goes right in the middle as you look at it this way. Which also keeps it all straight. So I think it's a pretty decent uh, design and clip. I just modified the other one and they pop out and in very easy but once they're in it's kind of hard to move them I think it's pretty neat the hairdo yeah. good morning boomer good morning Scott <laughs> love you bro okay now that it's daytime we get a much clearer view of everything two drip loops for this panel and this panel set right there and the connections right there and the last strip loop down there right, that goes for that panel see how the wires come around and go right into there and then right up the track down here 
one more thing I just did is I just drilled a hole right there to let water out for any water that does get in condensation or otherwise and it's a good size one but the bottom edge of this hole goes right down to the bottom layer and a little bit more to help it drain and this is the lowest corner I'm going to do the same thing on the other one these are all separated and in order and tie wrapped crisscrossed looking real good got all the connections and if you look you'll see these terminals wanted and they wanted to get close to each other I kept them away okay so these come in they come all the way on over here and then we got them connected here you can see, I'll see if I can get the camera down there where I can't see but that'll show you how it's all hooked up nicely all the grounds right there and the electrical box. This uh, receptacle on the left is going to be L2 and that's going to be L1. I kind of got them in reverse order but I spray painted uh, a little bit of black paint on L1. And you notice we have the on off switch on these. Well this electrical is not hooked up. The electrician hasn't come by yet and I'm not licensed to so I will not. But I do have an extension cord up here. A nice heavy duty extension cord so I'm going to go ahead and do the test. Okay well before you hook this up and connect it to this, first thing you got to do is make sure the switch is off, which I did. You turn the unit off. You hook your solar panels up first to the grid tie inverters, ground it, and then make sure the switch is off. Then you can hook it to power. And we're done here. Then I'm going to turn this switch on, move some wires so we can see the lights. And there we are and the switch is on. You notice one LED stays on for just a second and then it starts going. This unit is operational. Those lights blinking in order. The green lights and not the red light means everything's a go and it's doing. If we get a chance we're going to put one of the uh, kilowatts or a, or a power monitor on the end of the plug and we'll check them out. I already test, tested this one and I tested this one and then we're going to go over and test the other two maybe Boomer will be back by then and he's got the uh, power consumption meter that'll be pretty cool I like it blink 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 let's get a nice close up Wee. <laughs> gotta love it I'm going to turn this off and disconnect this one's L1 this is L2 and this follows out goes into this junction box the other one's hooked up the same way and it runs way out here goes to that curve in the conduit that I made with the uh, bicycle rim because we didn't have the tubing vendor continues all the way out across in front of that peak right there across the porch and then runs down a little bit farther and then the room past his office right here is where the uh, electrical box is the electrician will come by and connect that up and will be in business. For now we might run two uh, extension cords out here, one for L1 and one for L2. We'll give them half the power, so we'll get uh, give them enough from one box anyway. Well, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Sorry about the beep, beep, beep in the background. I can't tell them guys to stop. <laughs> Wouldn't want to anyway. You keep smiling, have a ball, and God bless. Many good things to you and yours. Now, well, here we're back. Digital electricity usage monitor. Uh, 125 volts, 1800 watts, power max. Simply plug it in. This says usage monitor. Anyway, so it's not going to show us our watts in reverse. If it was plugged up trying to measure what something is using, that's a little different. But we can prove we got 122 volts here. Turn the meter on. It says 123. And I've seen it jump up to about 124 after a minute. So, it's definitely working, just can't show you no wattage. And I don't have a single wire to put the clamp meter around to show amperage. So, but anyway, I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Oh, and one more thing. I'm the proud owner of a working solar system of 4,000 watts. Raymond Head, R Head 100, Boomer by gosh, Louisville by gosh, Texas. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Raymond Head, Boomtown Laboratories. Yeah.
there we are. It's been a minute later. There's the 124 volts. Dropped back down 123. Still says zero watts. Not meant to read the wattage in reverse. Oh well. Another day. By the way, on a positive note, before I leave, I'm going to ride that big slow merry-go-round in the sky over there. <laughs> it's just too beautiful. There is no wind here and that thing is still turning. Can't believe it.